Minnesotans are not going to have a chance to hear the barking dogs for much longer. Actually, just five more days. That's because next week will be Steve Cannon's last at WCCO Radio after more than 26 years at The Good Neighbor. Now, I've worked in the same building with Steve Cannon for nearly 20 years, and despite that, you've agreed to join us tonight. Yeah, and that's right, Eric. How did you... Where's your scarf? <laughs> a little early. Oh, little okay. Early. You haven't got the scarf First here. Us, you, coined, you coined the nickname, though. I did do that, yeah. He was wearing a scarf, Kathy, around the studio all the time, you know. I said, what is it with you with a scarf? He says, I'm cold. So I'd bring him on my show, and he'd review wrestling for me and uh, far-out rock and roll music. Yeah. On my show, you on, know, your show. on the evil neighbor. Oh. <laughs> so anyhow, I nicknamed him uh, the Scarf. You did, and it's tough. How did you escape all the format changes and all the trends in radio? I mean, you've basically done the same show for for your whole career. Um, was it just force of personality telling management to get lost, or what? well, I guess I just stuck to my guns. You know, I just said this is the way I'm going to do it, and it's going to be successful, and it's been successful. And I'll tell you another thing, Eric, my boy. If you're making money for them, they leave you alone. That's it. That's the key. Is, is that the secret to dealing with management in any business? Oh, I think so, yeah. I just got off the phone, as a matter of fact. You know, uh, Davis, the kid that was kicking uh, field goals from Minnesota, missed right. that 22-yarder that may, may have cost him the game. Right. He just signed on with uh, San Diego. So I said to him, Davis, how are you feeling? He says, I can't kick. <laughs> it's a joke, R folks. R R R R Those are one of the Just radio jokes. Pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Please. How'd you develop the, 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 your oh, alter? Before okay. you go on, i got to tell you another thing. My brother Harold called me, Crazy Harold Crazy from yes, Los Crazy Angeles yes, today. Yes. Very close to Marv Albert. And he's broken up about Marv's problem. Stop laughing. I haven't hit the joke yet. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll cue, me, cue me when you want me to go. I'll cue you when, when you laugh. But anyhow, Harold said that Marv is going to bounce back. <laughs> he's heard out there that Fredericks of Hollywood, right, they may hire... I'm, I don't know if it's sure, you know, for sure yet. They might hire Marv to uh, model feminine lingerie. It's perfect. It's perfect. It is perfect. Victoria's Secret wants to get in there, too. His people are talking to Victoria's Secret and to Fredericks of Hollywood. So this is the latest on Marv Alfred. It's perfect. Yes. Personality radio, yes. Mr. Cannon. Yes, Kathy. Mr. Cannon. So I lean into the microphone. Yes. Where is that radio microphone? It's right. Right. Don't you wish you had it right I in front I of you right now? Here, yes. I understand that okay. feeling, believe me. That's the key to success, is it not, though? I remember talking to you in the studio one day, and you had gone off on the announcers who rely on calls as a crutch. And you said it's all about personality, young woman. Well, yeah. And if you're going to do uh, telephone radio, as I like to call it, you better have the personality to go along with it. It's never been in my bag. I, I once said it took me 21 years to get to WCCO, to get my own show there. And if the folks want to call me, do 21 years on other stations, and then you can call me, okay? <laughs> but I'm not going to be around. Uh, how did, did uh, your alter egos, the little cannons, get developed? And how, how much a part are they of your life? They're there, Eric. I get paid for that schizophrenia. Do you hear that, folks? What camera are we on? Over here? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not Morgan Mundane. I am not Ma Linger, and I'm not Backlash LaRue. You know, folks have questions about all of them. A woman was doing, are we politically correct here at all times? No, go no, ahead. No, okay. Let it go. So she, she, she did the Sunday feature on me in the Pioneer Press. It was a great feature, you know. I mean, we were talking and everything. Finally, she had one last question. Steve, uh, one last question. May I ask, is Backlash, uh, back, Backlash LaRue, I said, is he gay? Is that what you're asking? And she said, yeah. I said, I'll tell you what. If you print it the way I answer it, I'll answer it. She said, okay. I said, ask the question. She says, backlash gay. I said, I've known him for 25 years, and he's never made a pass at me. <laughs> That's what she wrote. That's Perfect. the answer. You were Wrangler Steve on TV. I was. Yes. And I want to know, <laughs> the, what's the magic of radio for you? I prefer radio over TV myself, actually. Well, when I was Wrangler Steve, that was 1953. I worked right over here in the Ham Building, not far from here. Channel 11. We shared the channel with WTCN. I was brought up here from Milwaukee where I was working for the Hearst Corporation at WISN. Larry Benson, great guy, he said to me, Steve, you come up here, you're going to be a star. We're going to give you a Steve Allen Tonight Show. Hmm. I said, great. Band, the whole thing, yeah, sidekick. And I said, that's wonderful. So I got up here, started doing a disc jockey show on their radio station, WMIN. I kept, when am I going to do television? Because this was the embryonic stages. We've got one for you. I said, what is it? 
we bought the, a nice package of movies and they threw in some old westerns. <laughs> and what we want you to do is go down to there was a place called Cone's Costume Shop in downtown St. Paul here. Get yourself some chaps, some boots, a lariat, and some <laughs> fake guns. You're going to be a cowboy. I said, what about the Steve Allen show? They said, that's coming. I said, I'm not going to do it. They said, we'll pay you X amount. I said, I'll do it. But I'll do it on my level. Folk, folks that, that haven't, maybe there's a few people that haven't heard you or have not heard you in a while, you're on from 3 to 6 for the next week, 8.30 a.m., and you'll be reminiscing the next week? I will do that. Help me out here before you go. Where did the Eveleth barking dogs come from? Beyond it being you know, Eveleth, but where did that whole shtick come from? My, both my brothers were in the Eveleth City Band under the direction of genial Emil Eichela, and your father was in that band. Yep. French horn. French horn. <laughs> and uh, they recorded this thing. And I got it, and I played on the radio for 26 years, there you and go. I survived 26 years. And congratulations. And you got the money. And I got the money. Thanks, Thanks right. Eric. Great to have Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Kathy. Appreciate Thanks. it. Okay.